All right, hey, how's it going? All right, uh, hope you guys are doing well. Let's look at this uh, stack of comics and magazines that I got today. This is uh, two months worth. I skipped September, so this is September and October jammed together, and we're going to try and go quick. I want to get this done fast. It's late, and uh, Camel Moon is coming on in a half hour. Let's knock this out, all right? This is uh, Quasimodo's Monster Magazine from about 1976. What an incredible cover. Isn't that great? So this is a Monster Magazine that you might have found at the bait shop at the lake while you're on summer vacation or something. This is a low distribution, unusual Monster Magazine. It's not Famous Monsters. Uh, it's going to be different than Famous Monsters. It's still going to be corny, but it's going to be a different kernel than uh, the typical Famous Monsters corn. Wow, this looks kind of cool. It's that Star Wrecked. Uh, this is going to be fun. So this will be fun to read. It's going to be dated. It's going to be it's going to be fun. It'll be cool. All right, same type of deal. This is uh, Screen Thrills from 1962. Screen Thrills number two. This is awesome. This is uh, going to be lots of stills from movies and movie serials of all different types. Action and horror and science fiction and westerns and Superman superheroes. This is a big Superman article. It looks great. I can't wait to read this. And it's all going to be dated because it was all produced and published and written in 1962. Wow, look at this. King of Clyde Beatty. King of Jungle Land. This looks amazing. So yeah. Screen Thrills, illustrated. Eerie number 15. Wow, so boy, we hear this all the time, but this is supposed to be fine. And it looks like it's never been read. There's that little crease over there on the right hand side, but and that's probably why it's graded this way, but it still feels brand new. It still is it looks like a copy that you would have gotten off the rack in 1968. That's yeah, really nice. Gets me, the doll collector. <laughs> okay. We've got to go, go, go. This is a new new, uh, new thing. I don't buy new things, but I did this one. This is back issue from a couple week, months ago, from August of this year. It looks great. It's all about cartoon comic tie-ins. It's all about all this great stuff that we all love or that I love so much. Comics and cartoons from the 1970s, mostly. It looks great. Can't wait to read all this. Fun, fun, fun. All right. Speaking of fun, it's Nemesis the Warlock, Torquemada, by Pat Mills and Kevin O'Neill. This is a British comic from the 1980s, and it's edgy and weird and cool and trippy. And I recommend this stuff. I like it. Nobody nobody wants this stuff. It's cheap. This was $4. Seriously. It's cool. <sighs> Creepy number 25. This is still in the bag. And it's really... It looks nice. It's a nice copy. I've needed this. I needed this issue. I'm going to frame this or hang this up for this Christmas. Looks like Christmas stamps... You know, and uh, it's a photograph of somebody in an Uncle Creepy mask with Uncle Creepy mask with a Santa Claus hat. And they're made to look like Christmas stamps. And it looks awesome. There was one of one of these masks. Maybe they remade them. Did they make those? They must have remade them. Here's the comics. Let's fly through these. Here's Conan number 96. It looks fantastic. It's going to be written by Roy Thomas and drawn by John Bashema and inked by Ernie Chan. See? Every page is a masterpiece. It's fantastic. I needed number 96. 
can't recommend it enough. Kazar number seven. I needed Kazar number seven. Great cover. This is from about 1975, and it feels like it just came off the rack. It's like brand new. It's Jerry Conway writing, and also John Bashema with Bob McLeod, who's a really talented inker. This is going to be good. Cool stuff. Avengers number 149. I have needed this issue since I was about 12 years old. It has Orca on the cover. I have always had that jump from 148 to 150. And now I have 149 to fill in that spot. And more great writing and great art. There's Steve Englehart writing these. And it's going to be George Perez on the interiors. And they are incredible. It's all good. Speed buggy number six. I don't do speed buggy uh, impersonations, but I heard somebody do one recently and it was right on. So yeah, he's like, relax, tinker. You can't really do it. This looks great. Speed buggy's gonna be fun. And this is also early 70s. This is Astonishing Tales number 14. Another issue that I have needed for a long time that I've plugged in now. And it's got a great Gil Kane cover. It's one of those, what are these called? Framed? Framed covers from the 70s? It's beautiful. Looks great. More Nemesis the Warlock. More trippy 1980s British alien world weird trippy stuff that's that's good i recommend it they're like two bucks a piece nobody wants these harlem globetrotters this is a weird situation okay is that all of the no well, there's more there's another torquemada or another uh here's nemesis the warlock number 10 this is new too i just picked this up see look at that great cover it's cool stuff okay uh, now, Harlem Globetrotters. So, I get this Harlem Globetrotters, right? And it's still bagged and boarded, and I feel it, and it feels kind of heavy. And I'm like, okay, that's weird. This can't be it. It's 20 cents. This isn't a giant-sized comic. And, uh, but it feels heavy, so I think, well, is this one of those ones with the, uh, the toy catalog inside or something so I, I take it out of the plastic and it still feels like it's giant sized and then I notice that there's two issues there's there was another comic slipped into the same bag as this Harlem Globetrotters and was inside of there and it's this Harley Quinn number 22 which I did not order um, from like I don't know 2000 something so this was stuck inside the same bag as Harlem Globetrotters. And, I mean, they're, they're close alphabetically, but it seems strange that Harlem Globetrotters and Harley Quinn would be arranged alphabetically in the same box, especially this close together, considering that's number 22 and this is Globetrotters number 7. So was it intentional was somebody hiding this harley quinn comic inside of this harlem globetrotters comic and it they forgot about it or they, they didn't get to it and it somehow ended up here i don't know but it's strange so i didn't want this comic but we have it now so let's move on past it there's no need to look at it instead <laughs> let's look at this this looks amazing Man, I hope they travel through time and go to Rome. Um, so you're going to get... This is more incredible stuff from the early 70s. October 73. Meadowlark Lemon and Curly Neal and Granny over here. And Dribbles the Dog. Look at that dog dribbling that basketball. Viva Globetrotters. This is going to be awesome. Okay. Moving right along. Crazy. Picked up this crazy, this Marvel crazy trade paperback, thinking that it was going to be a lot of old 1970s crazy reprints. 
And there's there's some in here, right? There's some in here. It looks like it's there's a lot of it in here. But then at the front, there's also this weird new stuff. I don't know what it's going to be like. It might be funny. It might not be funny. I don't know. I'm going to read it and try it anyway. Okay. Um, geez, we did it. We made it through. So uh, this is uh, the last part of the video. This is the last part of my haul. I, I, I got some Whitman books. So um, Whitman, the Whitman books. These, uh, I get these um, and collect these. This is an inexpensive collection. If you're an old person and you're interested in these, they're about four bucks a piece. No one wants them. Uh, I get them because they remind me of the time of the of the 60s when I was a kid. My my aunts and uncles used to have these when I was little. I would go to visit them, and many of them were old, and their children had long since grown up and moved out, and there were not many things for, for a, a kid to be interested in. So I might find one of these Whitman books with my aunt's magazines or something or on a shelf and it might be the only thing of interest to me or maybe this is interesting to someone it feels and smells like 1966 that's why i like it it's nice see even this gilligan's island one so you would think I mean, this is a popular show. Maybe there's Gilligan's Island fans out there and they're looking for the official authorized TV adventures in Whitman form. Um, but they're not. No one wants this. It's $4. <laughs> uh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I've never seen the island looking like that before. That looks cool. I'm going to read this and enjoy it. So... I hope you enjoyed this video that we just made and I just talked through and we talked about comics and magazines and we looked at this stack of new stuff that I got and uh, some of these old magazines are awesome and they're going to be amazing and fun to read looking forward to it um, this Eerie is going to be a fun experience because it's so brand new. It, it makes me feel like I just got it off the rack. So, hope you enjoyed... Look, the doll collector. That's me. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day or night. And I'll talk to you guys later.